It's actually very easy once you get used to it. I mean, so is any so is any other thing that's new. Like getting used to a new phone is easy once you get used to it. But like, yeah, a lot of people of today, like kids today, feel like when they hold those kind of phones and try to use it, they're like, "What the fuck is this ancient technology?" It's like, guys, if it wasn't, it's not that old. You guys are not that young. Like, yeah, you weren't born in that generation or whatever, but I'm not that old. The way kids make it out to seem, it's like, we're not that old. It wasn't that long ago. You could still get them. It's not like these phones are out of style. They still are being made and you can still use them. You, they still have service. It's not like older phones that no longer be made or anything. It's not like you can go out of your way to really get a landline phone nowadays. I mean, you can, but that's rare. But old school flip phones and all those old Motorola razors and all those, they're still around. You're not going to see many homes nowadays with a freaking K cordless phone or, you know, a, a landline phone now, unless it's a business. In most cases, businesses have those. And even then, most businesses have a set cell phone or a set phone for that business and business only. And people that work for said business usually have a cell phone to contact. <laughs> so, yeah. According to the Emoticon Dictionary, is a pretty good one. I see that all over. I see that all over, like, Facebook. I see it on Facebook, I see it on Twitch. Uh. <laughs> one Emoticon Dictionary. I'm not sure the at eyes for conveys an emotion as much as bug eyed to me. Uh, I always. F I, depending on the context, I guess, but I've always seen that as in, like, whenever somebody is, like, drunk or something or sick they usually like an anime they meant they 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 demote this by giving the character like drowsy eyes to denote they're either drunk or dizzy or tired or sick that's what it looks like to me it looks like a sick face but it also looks like it could be a dizzy face like somebody's like i don't know dizzy or imagine me like spinning my camera around to the point where you got sick i guess that can be used for that i don't know it depends on who you use it for though but that's what i see it as i see it as somebody using it in chat and they're like oh i don't feel so good or someone was spinning the camera around to the point where it made all the ch fans sick or or if say i streamed something and there was like a nude dead body on the sc on screen and it grossed people out you can post that and Twitch chat and it would make it out to seem like you're sick to your stomach because of what you just saw. I don't know. It depends. See there though that's different emo that's conveying multiple emotions though. And not all of them are emotions. <laughs> and a lot of them what you're conveying is feelings, not so much emotion. Like, you're feeling the sense of dizziness, but dizziness isn't an emotion. And now I can see that that looks like... See, that... <laughs> that could be interpreted to me. I see that commonly used, too, but that also looks like a... A pair of eyes that look like they are running. A pair of eyeballs that look like they're running snot. Because it looks like a... It looks like a nose that's dripping snot. No, it does not. The movement of eyes? I mean, I could see eight being used as eyeballs. I see that. But to me, the, the line makes it out to seem like it looks like it's a pair of eyeballs dripping snot. That's what it looks like to me. I have a weird... I'm weird. I just don't like sideways emoticons. And I know back in text days of old and your 
but emoticons are gonna be sideways. That's why I like these kind of emoticons. The ones that look like a face and ones that don't make me have to look sideways to see. My, my friends. My, my friends. I don't know. I don't really care for emoticons. I never did. Ha, you pup. How dare you buy in? Yeah, there's way... Uh, the normal... The normal... The normal... Top down is a lot better. Sideways, I just can't read it that way. I have to actually tilt my head. Yes, you can. As much as people want to make those look like actual boobs, all it does to me is it just looks like cleavage with dots. I'm sorry. Look close enough at it and all I can see out of that is an actual bra with cleavage and you can see the... The, the bra has some nipple holes. It does not look like a pair of breasts to me. It looks like a pair of breasts that are covered. Either that, or it also looks like a, a woman's legs that are flipped up in the air, which means her butt is showing. Which means it looks like a girl who's getting laid. So the Y would be the vajayjay. The vajayjay. So that's what it looks like to me there. See, that could be interpreted in multiple different ways. I do have an overactive imagination. Yes, I do. But it also depends on what you can see out of it, too, so... I mean... And weird, the way it looks on... The way it looks in Twitch's actual chat versus the restream chat, which is what I'm going off of because it allows me to read all of the different chats from different social medias. Uh, you can actually see the whole thing, so you can kind of see the differences of the different characters that make it up. But on Twitch, what I'm trying to say is it looks kind of cut off on Twitch, so you can your mind can kind of wander and say what that is. But on on this actual restream chat window... It does not look like anything. <laughs> it just looks like a bunch of random characters together. But on Twitch, that I can actually see the emoticon. If that makes any sense. Let's just say it looks better on Twitch. <laughs> You're a rude child! Now that you think about it, that also could look like a freaking pair of eyeballs that are... have a very, very pissed off brow line. Someone is pissed off. I don't know why I'm seeing that now. But I like, I like what I said earlier about the girl's legs being flipped up in the air and you, her ass is showing. <laughs> You know how often I see similar, those, uh, sexual position emotes, emoticons on Fantasy Star Online with the, the way that people can do, uh, word chat via actual pictures and things? Yeah, arts is a wonderful thing, it is. And I see a lot of it on PSOs, like, actual, like, chat, simple chats. Some people make 
the dirtiest things and the limitations they have. I don't even know how they do it. Because you normally you're just giving characters to make, you know, certain pictures or things out of. And some of these are actual detailed images of women. There's a few women with good faces that they've made. And there's some that they've made, like a girl having sex. It's ridiculous. People need to stop. Waiter, I would like a cherry pie, please. My favorite source of art is Game Facts. Oh, you know, I mean, that's... That's to be expected. <laughs> Any walkthrough you're going to read is going to have a dude making funny comments and remarks while he puts the fact up. Yeah. Yeah. Any fact, any game fact site you're going to read is going to have some dude who's going to put on some co uh, funny comments and witty, witty banter. So he's always going to have like a little smiley face or two for you to look at. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Oi, stop, stop rotating. I'm talking about the elaborate plain text ones. Multiple lines to make up a full portrait of a character. That too. But I thought we were talking about emoticons. I didn't know you were talking about something else differently. That's why I don't call them by a specific name, whatever S key is. I just call it, it's all art. It's all art. When you add a, when you put a, a specific name to a thing, I don't give a shit. It's all the same thing. It's all art. Text or not, I don't, I don't know the differences of technical names. Because technical names are stupid. Like I said, it's all just art. There is no level. It may be a, there may be levels and tiers to you, but it's all just art to me. There is no tier. There is no level. It's the same thing. That's just me, though. I look at it all as it's the same thing. And you're talking to a guy who loves art and went to school for art. You would think I would have more of a, you know, a thing for that, but I don't give a shit. But I never knew the official terminology for the name. I really don't care for it either way. But yes, no, those are always nice to look at. I find that I find that they waste their time doing it because it's pointless, but it is nice to look at. Oh, here's a wall of text followed by just random picture of said character. I don't care to use that, but here it is nonetheless. I personally kind of just hate it. It's nice to look at, but it's just like, why, though? Sorry, this setup feels so weird. I'm, like, pushed off. I'm, like, so pushed off of my normal seating positioning. 
And then I definitely felt like I was at the corner of my webcam there. It felt so uncomfortable despite having all this space, me being in that tight little corner of my webcam. <laughs> it feels like I'm an actual box. And it felt so uncomfortable. Even though I can move around freely, being while streaming, since you really sit in one spot, you do feel kind of boxed in. I've been wearing my freaking hood all day. Well, I've been wearing my hood on and off. I just need a break from it. Uh, it's the bottom one, isn't it? Then? Well, if anyone's good at doing those text art, feel free to post them in chat right now. All of them. <laughs> yeah, my favorite ASCII art was Etch a Sketch. Boom. Unfortunately, Twitch chat eliminates all multi-line formatting. Does now. I've seen it happen before. Maybe that was in the past. But I've seen it in Twitch before. Unless that's not call. Unless that's n a different thing than multi-line formatting. Whatever the fuck. I don't know. Names, man. I don't know names. If people have ways around that stupid rule, then I don't even care anymore. There's too many different names for so many different things. I know when I first started watching Twitch, it was more popular than this was years ago. So, you might be right. But, I don't see a reason for anyone to really use that besides to annoy the, the, the hell out of the streamer. Because that is spamming. And I don't mind spamming. I wouldn't mind having that, but I wouldn't want everyone to start doing that. If I ever do get big, it's going to get to the point where people are going to spam my emotes like mad for certain things and I don't want I don't want big lines of walls of text. In my chat box each word is on another line. Damn. Yeah. Like I said, though, I don't mind if, like, whenever I do get big, if I do, which I don't know. I say if, because I really don't think I will. You guys, I expect you guys to spam my emotes or other type of emotes whenever something crazy happens. And I still want that to happen now, but it's not like I get consistent chatters to do that. 
And the reason I say if is because it should have I should have been I should have gotten a little bit bigger by this point. Me having what I have and getting little to nobody uh, daily just shows that I something is wrong. I'm not doing something right. Yeah, <laughs> the pains of being too popular. Well, sorry, you're popular. Sorry, I'm not. Where I only get like maybe one to two chatters every other week. I don't know. I definitely had a lot more people in the past. A lot of them are gone now, but... Uh, man, that's like... That's like half my fan base that's gone, though. <laughs> all the people that stopped coming in here are pretty much all of them. I guess that shows I'm really not all that entertaining now, huh? Reminds me of the early days of Magic the Gathering. They knew that if people brought, bought too much, that the broken cards would cause a problem, but they figured that being popular is a good way, good problem to have. Huh. I'm just... I'm just trying to have fun. And if people enjoy my stuff, so be it. I honestly did not expect me to grow as much as I did. But it to die like that and then not come back is also showing me that I either suck and it's just, it's depressing me to see other people grow and me not. So something I'm doing is wrong. But I am generally just enjoying just having the few people that I do, though. I really do. I just have anxiety, so whenever I don't see me getting enough or getting something, or I just feel like I'm doing something wrong, or when I see other people surpass me and do better, I feel like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Because if Zero didn't stop streaming, he would have surpassed me by this point. I had another friend who streamed nothing but League of Legends and has almost, if not as much, people as I do now, and he's already got a sub... Uh, He's already got his affiliate status. And I'm just like, why am I struggling now while everyone else is surpassing me? Like, what are these other people doing that I don't? I know I'm not very entertaining. I know I don't talk unless unless there's somebody here talking with me like you are now, which is what's causing this conversation. And I know I'm generally boring. But is there anything I could do that increase that? I don't know. If the average Magic player only bought twenty to fifty dollars worth of cards, then a given playgroup would have one or two Black Lotuses, and while they would be that powerful, while they would be powerful, that wouldn't be too crazy. They didn't anticipate people buying whole boxes of boosters at the same time. I wouldn't. Mm, I wouldn't know the crazy schematics of Magic: The Gathering. That sounds ridiculous. And yes, there's a spot to heal on the boat. I prefer to actually just go to the Pokemon Center. Hey, though, the people I do have are consistent. They join enough every now and then. You guys are cool. You stick around. Uh, one person may not stick at, stick around as much. Jared, sorry to throw your name out there, but you come and go so often that I don't understand you. I don't know if you're leaving or if you are got to leave or if I'm boring or what, but it, my anxiety acts up every time. I can't help it. People are just going to come and go, but unfortunately I am the way I am. So whenever I see a consistent person coming in and then just leaving, I always get stressed out. Yes, there's a spot. There is a spot to heal on the boat, yes. I always forget about it. It's 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 in a it's it's in the only empty room. I believe it's the only empty room on the place because you have an SS ticket, which was Bill's originally. 
So you have a room. I just thought there was an NPC that you had to talk to to heal. Uh, Fire Red Leaf Green, there is. Oh, not the originals. Ah, is that the original? That's dumb. Huh. I love that I'm referencing something from a remake when I've played the original far more than I did play that shitty remake. Hmm. That's odd. Looks like my memory of Fry Red and Leaf Green is a lot better than I thought. I've only played those games a handful of times because they're not good. They are not good remakes. Still good. They are good games, though. The remake, the remake, however, no. I only played this in gold. You ain't missing much. You played the best ones. That's it. Well, you have played the best generations. If you're going to continue to play Pokemon, I suggest you pick up Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and nothing more. Heart Gold, Soul Silver is a remake of Generation 2. After that, you can stop. Because then you're going to get into Gen 5 territory, and I don't think you want to dabble in black and white. X and Y, I'd say give a go. But if you don't really care for Pokemon anymore, don't worry about it. But yeah, X and Y is probably the only generation I'd say actually really give a thorough chance. Ruby and Sapphire, no. Black and White, no. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, no. Heart Gold, Soul Silver, yes. X and Y, yes. Sun and Moon, no. Sword and Shield, probably not. I mean, it's a good game. All the game, all these generations are good. Just the la just the few of them that I mentioned, Black and White and Old, uh, Ruby and Sapphire, are le my least favorite games. Is all. They're not bad. They're just my least favorite. It had diverged from what I wanted. I wanted them to expand the battle, make a tactical combat like Fire Emblem and whatnot. Instead, they just made hundreds of more critters and ops and obsoleted half of the old moves and critters. That's all they do is just they take the same old, the same old, same old. They they implement new mechanics in certain like mini games and other things, or otherwise, you know, certain evolutions, certain new things. But they don't change the battle. The combat is the same. All they do is add more creatures. They add new ways to evolve. It wasn't 151 or 251 enough? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I have no problem with them implementing more Pokemon. That's the gimmick with Pokemon, though. Yeah, so... Yes. No, I'm not... I'm not... What? No, that's what I meant. That's what I was saying. Every generation implemented new and new mechanics to different things, but they didn't change anything with the battle system at all. Adding in Dark and Steel and Fairy and all these other new types does not change up the Pokemon's battling. It changes up whatever strategy that doesn't exist in this game. I'm sorry, Pokemon to me is not a strategy game until you get into the PvP side of things. If, if you really want to go into the strategy side of Pokemon, then that's going to be your player versus player aspect. When it goes to the player versus enemy aspect, there is no strategy whatsoever. This game is far too easy. And that's the downfall with Pokemon, is it's, it's still becoming too kid-friendly. Oh no, they are very necessary. I'm not saying they weren't. Even even fairy was necessary. They should have, yeah. Yeah, even even fairy As much as I hate to say this, even fairy was necessary. Not so much for the stupid dragon weakness, because dragon does not need another weakness. Poison needed a stronger advance, though. But actually able to move around on the battlefield to get more advantage. 
Eh. But it's turn-based, though. But it's turn-based, though. So speed is gonna be who goes first, though, when it comes to that. Now, being able to move around the battlefield, if you want Pokemon to turn into Kingdom Hearts, then that'd be more my... Damn, if Pokemon became an ARPG, that'd be more my jam right there. I am a bigger fan of ARPGs than I am turn-based combat. That's also why Pokemon is falling. It's because they are not doing anything new. No. They're not doing anything new with Pokemon. That is my biggest gripe. Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy is changing every new iteration. Every iteration of Final Fantasy changes up the combat style slightly just to give you a different edge on things. Whether it's ATB system or, you know, this other mechanic or other things to change up the style. Final Fantasy is slowly not is slowly becoming not uh, less and less turn-based. But it also helped the series evolve whether it was good or bad. Pokémon the only thing Pokemon has done to change up anything is it's changing up what you do. It gives you different outfit. You can like there's certain gimmicks like Mega Evolution and stuff like that. While those gimmicks to me are kind of useless, the whole Mega Evolution, Gig Dynamax, and all those are useless to me. But then there's like, then there's like, oh here we can dress up your Pokemon or dress up your character, like in X and Y or in this in Sword and Shield, you can dress up your character uh, to whatever you like uh, to make them look different. Or in you know, hey, uh, let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee, you ha you had the option to dress up your character and your Pokemon, stuff like that. Like I like stuff like that, the slice of life stuff that affects the gameplay of you moving around not the gameplay of you fighting because the gameplay involving the turn-based combat has not changed whatsoever and conquest is is a pokemon game that should never exist why because that is that is that is a genre of gaming i hate i am not a big fan of board game strategies like like freaking final fantasy tactics I'm not a big fan of tactics style gameplay. That's if you if you want more of that, then that's what you're that then Pokemon Conquest and stuff like that is for you. But that's not for me. Yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of uh, those kind of games. I don't know why. To be fair, I have not given them a lot of chance, but from the ones that I have played of it, I just did not care for it. I see the appeal. Just not for me. Also, it goes to show you that I am not the smartest when it comes to strategy. Because the last game I really delved deep... It's actually one out of Pokemon, although an action RPG could be cool. Yes. Well... The way you described it, make it out to seem like that'd be an awesome and a, a nice new addition. Yeah, but an ARPG Pokemon game, that would be cool. I just don't know how they would do it. See, it's already... they. Here's the thing with Sword and Shield. I don't know if you've seen it. Sword and Shield now, it's no longer, it's no longer Pokemon as we know it. Because one, everything else is the same except for the Dynamax. But the whole encounter, the whole thing used to be, you know, an RPG, a turn-based RPG. What is turn-based RPGs known for? Random encounters. Wild battles. What does Pokemon Sword and Shield have? Set encounters. While that's cool, I actually prefer that better than the turn wild encounters that the original games have. But it takes away and it changes up pokemon to the point where it just doesn't feel like what pokemon was so instead of changing up your combat you're changing up everything based around it oh let's add in five way battle let's add in rotation battle let's add in two three way battles let's add in i'm sorry the things that game freak adds are bad except for the clothing and the walking pokemon gimmick Pokemon following you and the clothing your trainer were the best gimmicks that Pokemon has ever implemented. 
The rest can go fly a kite somewhere. But I can also see Pokemon actually doing far better as a tactical game, like like Conquest or its Tactics. I could see it working better as a tactical game than I do than a uh, turn-based game. If implemented well, I would give it a chance. The only reason I didn't give Conquest a chance is just because just the idea of old, like, Old-time hero warriors from the past teaming up with Pokemon just seems kind of a dumb concept. That was a fan-based action RPG. I don't know if it was any good. Pokemon Generations. I think I've heard of it, but for some reason don't remember it. Fan-based action RPG. Probably not, but I could be wrong. No, I've already been in here. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I still love Pokemon. Don't get me wrong. I just... They're not doing anything new with it. The combat is not changing. The battle is not changing. They're All they're doing is adding in useless gimmicks that are going to be taken out a, uh, another generation later. They're adding in more and more Pokemon who I can barely even remember now. Uh... So, yeah. I, I just... I just... I want the same old... I want all of my Pokemon in one spot, enough Game Freak, with I'm adding in more Pokemon, and we're on the next console, so we're going to focus on... We're, we're, we're going to totally say we're going to focus on the backgrounds and all the animations without actually changing anything to do with the backgrounds or animations. You know, freaking the fighting is still the same. The Pokemon still look like they're shooting from a freaking distance. They have not changed that in the slightest. But no, they'll take out all of the Pokedex to give you all the Pokemon, you know, take away the entire thing that made Pokemon Pokemon. You know, gotta catch them all. But no, they took that out. That's the biggest, that is the biggest downfall of Gen 8. And a lot of people can sit there and look at me like, that's a dumb reason. No, that is legitimately the only real reason to sit there and not want to play it. Is because you can't get all your Pokemon. Yeah, I'll play it still, but am I going to transfer my Pokemon there? Not until they get me all of them. I don't care. It, it freaking pisses me off that they, they do that. For what? To make the game look as best as it can? The game looks the fucking same as it always does. The game looks like a fucking 3DS game. I'm sorry, nothing's changed. Nintendo Square, or N Square, <laughs> Nintendo and Game Freak, if you want to make Pokemon appeal to more people, make it harder, but also at the same time give people options to make it easier, for the youngins, don't change up, don't focus so heavily on the backgrounds and the graphics and models of everything, focus on everything, including your fights as well, make that better, change up the mechanics a little. Don't just be like, oh, here's here's Z moves, and then call that a change mechanic. That is not a battle mechanic. All you're doing is giving your Pokemon an additional new move to use in battle. How is that a change to battling? How is Mega Evolution changing to a battling? The only thing that really changed via Mega Evolution was that it changed up the meta. The PvP side of things. That, to me, doesn't do shit otherwise. So I don't consider a lot of these in-battle stuff, like Mega Evolution and Dynamax, to be anything changing up mechanics any in any way, because technically the only thing that's really changing up is meta. What people now can use to implement into their strategies when they battle PvP-wise. But when it comes down to battling the, the canon storyline, you know, PvE, none of these, none of these will have an uh, effect at all. You... I think the coolest, the coolest thing that who some the a fan or a group of fans did 
which didn't really do much. All they did was take the same game, a ROM of a game, and made it online. Poke MMO. It's basically fire red, leaf green, heart gold, soul silver, and black and white, but you can actually talk to other people playing the game and see other people, and you can play the game with a friend and be like, hey, I'll watch your fight, or hey, here's this Pokemon, can I trade you, or whatever, and you can see them right then and there. Poke MMO is good for that reason, because it's what I've always wanted in Pokemon, an online Pokemon game. Yeah, Poke MMO is fun, but it's all it is, it's just a ROM hack. Well, it's not even a ROM hack at all. All it is is a application you download that you basically you take ROMs like Leaf Green and Fire Red, Heart Gold, and put them into the game or whatever. You put them into a specific folder, and it basically asks you at the beginning of the game when you set up your character and all that what t what generation you want to start with. You can start with jo Kanto, Johto, or Unova, I believe. Before it was just Johto or Kanto. Then they literally added jo uh, Kanto, uh, Johto, and uh, Unova into it. And then uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver's ROMs, they have, you can have Pokemon follow you, and that's about it. You can have Pokemon follow you, you can choose up to the first, you can choose up to one of three or four generations. It's really cool. That lets you boot it as a multiplayer and learn with the same player. Huh. I don't know about that. This is actual... This, this is actual, like... A fake MMO. I call it that just because it's not a real MMO, but there is no none of that whatever second player controls NPC thing. Might be similar, but it's that's not. Because you and a friend actually can play. Yeah, a real Pokemon MMO would be neat, but yeah. If you were to play Poke MMO, me and you would be able to play and see each other and chat and actually trade, battle, watch each other's fights. It's fun. It was a fun game. It was a fun project I did for a while. I didn't stream or anything. It was before I did any of that. Hopefully in the future I, uh... Oh, trust me, back when I first played it, this was probably before X and Y came out. This is actually quite a bit before X and Y came out. Everyone was on the hype train of that. And it was... I was just playing through Jot uh, the Kanto region. I think that's all there was at the time. And fucking people everywhere. Trust me, the moment you play that game, you'll see people. Like, on it. it it's... A lot of people love it. I loved it. I also like that they made, I think, certain legendaries a timed thing. I'm not sure how legendaries worked because I didn't have any of them in the game, but I think they became like a timed thing to where you have them for a limited time or someone fights you and if you lose, you lose the rights to them or something. Or I don't know how they would make... Because each... Even though it's a, an MMO, you still have... It's still loading an, a ROM. So, like, it's still going to load the same game, but it's going to have... It's not like it's an actual MMO to where the creatures in the game, once they're caught, they're gone. If what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they would do that. <laughs> but I liked it. I think there was another Poke MMO. That had similar elements to uh, what Sun and Moon tried doing, where you need this specific Pokemon to be able to get into this gym or whatever. They had a thing where it's like, oh, for Brock's gym, you need a grass type Pokemon. So here, here's a gra here's this lady. Go talk to her after you get a Butterfree or whatever, and she'll allow you to go and enter this area where you can get a bunch of grass type Pokemon or some stupid shit. I actually liked that. Whatever, whatever MMO, Poke MMO that was. It wasn't the one that I'm talking about now. Oh, Ivysaur. Oh, shit.
Completely forgot I have Ivysaur now. In the near future, I want to do PokeMMO. I was trying to do it before with Zero when he was still streaming with me, but my controller didn't work for whatever stream that's part of. I know it's part of a Xenoverse stream that I tried doing, then I just said, fuck that game, and been out of it so long that that game was kicking my ass. And I don't know, I just wasn't very happy that day. And then I tried playing PokeMMO, and my controller didn't work. I love how I try to start streaming around like 3 o'clock and it's now like 7. Because <laughs> I did a bunch of setups and there was a... ...issue where I started streaming earlier and then this computer started making this annoying sounds and I tried to fix it and then it didn't do a damn thing and all I did was waste time. And by sound, I was, my computer's just making a static -y noise. That picks up whenever I'm streaming or something, I don't know. It's not a big deal. Not like I'm going to be able to fix it. Nor do I really care to anymore. I give up. I'll never be good at anything I like doing, so it doesn't really fucking matter anymore. I should expect that, that I, all my life I've been thrown, shown that nothing I do ever I get better at, so why did I expect that I would actually get good at Twitch? Twitch is people. Getting good. <laughs> people is a huge task. Yeah, but if I was anyone else, if I was anyone else, I would have, I would be popular right now. It's because it's me. Trust me, it's hard to explain that, but I see it all the time. I know what I'm talking about. I can't, I can't really say this to people and then not have people think that I'm just being depressing and being uh, pessimistic, but I'm actually being optimistic. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah, I'm sure if I was a girl, it'd be easier too, but there's plenty of guys out there who are famous on Twitch. I wouldn't go so far as to say famous, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, and you're... And you're not even... You're not even stating not enough cleavage. You're literally asking. <laughs> not enough cleavage? But, like, going back to that, though, even if I shown cleavage and I was a sexy-looking girl, I guarantee you I would not get anywhere. It's because it's me. No. The fact that it's me. And honestly, all those people out there who do that, who literally just pay gir girls money just so they, because they're hot, and they don't even get anything out of it, just to stop. Like, seriously, that needs to stop. Like, I don't care if this girl's hot. You're not getting jack shit out of it, and all you're doing is wasting money by throwing a cam girl money. Why don't you go look at actual, you know, sex cam girls who actually, you know, will show you things? Not a Twitch cam girl, because they don't show you shit. It looks like they are, just so they can get the views. 
But in reality, if they actually did, they would get banned. And trust me, what would you guys honestly do if I was a girl? Would you, would you honestly expect me to be a cam whore? Because trust me, I'd be just as clothed as I am now if I was a female. I would, I would be the nerdiest girl you would ever meet. I guarantee you, I would not sit there and do my go out of my way to sit there and to show off that I'm good looking. If I was a good looking woman, I would not go out of my way to be showing off my bits and shit. Fuck no. I hate you, tentacle. You can go shove it up your ass. And no, I don't think I'm that boring. I just I just get very distraught and upset whenever I just see other people growing and then and then I see I've been streaming for s some time now and I just don't see myself growing anymore. I grew in the beginning. I am happy that I am where I'm at. Because I would not be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for you guys. And I love all of you guys. Don't, I'm not saying that I don't. But what's bothering me is that I'm just not getting anywhere. No matter how much I stream. Like, I get I get a couple of you guys that come in, and that means a lot to me. But a lot of the guys that come in, though, they leave, though. I just I feel like I'm not entertaining enough to keep people's attention. Obviously, I'm enough to keep your attention. So obviously, there's something I'm doing right. To keep some of you guys' attention. And I have 200 follows. There's obviously I have something to do for that. To gain that much notoriety. I even have about 160 subs on YouTube. And somewhat still growing. And then there's Mixer. Which I got two followers on. So it's like I'm doing something right to get people. It's just. I've been streaming for about oh, three, four years now. Almost four years. I find that pretty bad. If I'm not. If I'm only at this point, And I've been streaming for four years. When people have easily tripled my my status in much less time and i thought me growing to f and i thought me getting my sub button or my affiliate status happened fast that happened that actually happened real fast but like ev after i got that 200 though it slowed the fuck down like to the point where i'm not getting a damn thing cuz half the followers i even have a lot of them don't even say anything or come in or even probably never even visited my channel. I don't know. I'm trying, guys. I just I get very depressed easily. That's all it is. I don't mean to bring it down into the actual stream, but it's just who I am as a person. And you're getting you're getting me a hundred percent me. No fake, no lies, nothing. Maybe I should be a titty streamer. Well. I don't have the money for a sex chain. I'm sorry. And plus, you wouldn't like that anyway. Then I'd be ugly. And then I'd be ugly as hell. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is... is the way you guys... The way some people say it, it's like I can control it. I know it scares people away, but I can't control how I get. Some people need to sit there and just respect others and see others for what they are. Not run away from somebody just because they have issues. I can't control that I have issues. It's not, it's not the lack of people that's causing the de depression. It's me that's causing the depression that causes more depression. I worry myself sick when I think about other things, yes. But it's not them that's causing the anxiety and issues. It's me. But here's the thing is, I... You all, you said you're all familiar with issues and depression. Then you already know that no matter how much you do, you're never good enough. I'm sorry, that's how I feel on a day-to-day. -day. I also see it. I don't also get that on a day-to-day, -day, but I also see it on a day-to-day -day by a lot of the things that I want to do, things that I try doing, and people I talk to. 
whenever someone else does it, they're okay. But whenever I try to do something, it's... Oh no, God no, it's against the freaking world. So, whenever I try doing something, I'm just... I feel like I'm just never good enough. And that's... That's where I'm at with. Then that's honestly just how I feel. And it's nothing against you guys. Nothing you guys make me feel. It's how I get. Because you guys definitely don't make me feel that way. I personally just feel like I'm terrible at things. I can't control that I get... That I get this way. And that it rubs off on chat. Or in chat. Because that's just... You're seeing me as me. So you're going to see this, regardless. And yes, I know it has scared off people, and trust me, it has. I've I've had people straight up say that in chat before that that they're not they're not liking this whatever yada yada. But I can't control it. One minute I'm gonna be happy, the next minute I can see something that instantly upsets me. Most of the time, I'm not even upset. Most of the time, like right now, I'm actually pretty... I'm having fun. Most of the time, a good chunk of the time, you see me having fun. It may not look like it a lot, just because I'm not... <laughs> I'm personally not the most, like, entertaining and most, like... Happy person? Even, even when I'm, like, on my own? Because... Again, this is me. You're seeing me. You're not seeing anything else. So, like... On a regular day-to-day, -day, I'm not exactly, like, the most uppity, happy, uppity person. You know what I mean? Like, it's just who I am. I'm not depressed or sad or anything. It's just... I'm not also, like... woo -wee, Sunshine and balls of fluff and shit canary. I was having a good DBZ conversation the other day. The other day? You mean like the other last stream that you were... came in, or whatever? I mean, you were here, like, not that long ago, like, the other day. I don't remember which streams, but... Was it when I was playing Dragon Ball Z? I don't remember. <laughs> so much shit goes on in my... in my head. Having to deal with a bunch of shit at work that involves a bunch of numbers and letters and streaming on a day-to-day -day basis, I barely can remember a lot of things. I barely can remember half the shit I gotta deal with at work. Ah, okay. I figured it had something to do with Kakarot. First time I've seen Ka well. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed. <laughs> I don't remember the conversation all that much. Oh yeah, that takes me to that. <sighs> I'm sure most of the conversations that I had involving Dragon Ball Z has always been a decent one, just because I can, I can go in it. I can go in on them combos. But hey, I'm obviously an entertaining enough for you to stick around, Quan. Otherwise, you probably would have left like with the rest of the <laughs> Like with the rest of the people. I forgot I named my guy Slut. Look like a cool game. I'm not in a place to buy new game systems and whatnot, but I gotta get added to the someday list. Nah. It's a very good game. You were really invited? So how's your Pokedex? I've already caught 40 kids. Different kinds are everywhere. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're here for me. I'm glad that you enjoy my content regardless. I'm glad that you feel that way. I know not every person's gonna f feel that way. And not everybody has depression or stress or anxiety either. So for anyone who does, I... I'm always here if you need to chat with me. Um, I appreciate it. I know I will grow. I know I need to hit into that. I'm ha I'm I I obviously just hit a dry spell. I know there's a snag I got to get over. 
but there's like literal no way for anybody not to grow because regardless of how boring you are you're going to be entertaining to somebody trust me i've had a lot of people comment on my youtube channels oh man why aren't you bigger than you are you're so underrated obviously people enjoy my content even i'm getting here and there messages of my live streams over on facebook or over on youtube uh while i'm live you know, I had one yesterday. I had a message yesterday and a message here today. If I would have actually paid attention and actually saw them, I, the guy might have still be here by this point, which I missed both of those messages because, you know, chatting or talking, and I just don't always glance over in time. But I know I'll grow. I just need to get that snag, that, that, that snafu or whatever is holding me back. It's not always. It's not just depression that's holding me back. It's just... Obviously, people don't like that I'm streaming multiple games. I don't like to just stream one game, though. Unfortunately, I'm the kind of guy who cannot just stream one game. PSO, I can stream. I can stream PSO like I used to, day in and day out for two to three hours a day, but I guarantee you, both of us will get burnt out. I can't. Like, I have a friend who streamed in nothing but League of Legends, and I don't know how often he streamed, but... My lord, he caught up to me and got a sub button, an affiliate status, much quicker than me with one damn game. Now I get it, PSO is what got me my status, so I'm not, I stream. I did about the same thing, streamed about, you know, one game at a time for several months, but I did do other things in the meantime. I didn't just start with PSO, I did Pokemon and other things, but it's, it's ridiculous. Because I was trying to do a schedule, a set schedule. You know, two games a day here gives me some variety, and I'm a variety streamer. And people liked that to an extent. Some people didn't. Then I've had people at work tell me to focus on one game. That's not why I stopped doing the streaming I, or the scheduling. I stopped doing the scheduling just because it was stressing. It was stressing me out. If you want to reframe your daily attitude, might suggest. He has a book on happiness and many lectures on YouTube, depending on your preferred style. Really reprograms the way you think about it. Ah. Huh. Yeah, but that's asking for help. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's not my daily attitude so much. It's just... It's, it's more or less needing to change me... Not so much my attitude. How about how about change up the fact that I was... Uh, no, that that's... Probably going back into what you were saying. No, it's more or less you gotta change the entirety of me. But that... I can't really say that without you guys thinking I'm depressing. I appreciate it. I'll have to look into that, but I I feel like that's just asking for help. I'm not I'm not here to look for sympathy or help. Cuz if that was the case, I would have bought medication long ago. And I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to actually I want to take this depression and freaking knock it on its ass. Getting help for it, all that proves is that you're just weak. And that might be my sentimental downfall. That might be what kills me somehow down the line. But you know what? That's just how I am. As a person. But no, you can't change... I don't want to change up who I am as a person. I really don't, because you don't need to change up that. I just want people to accept me is what I want. I appreciate it. You don't really got to worry about me, though. But I appreciate it. Thank you. I try to just be happy. I just want to be accepted. That's more of what I want. That's more of what I need right now. Everyone tells me to worry about myself, but... What happens if worrying about yourself is... What is... 
is hinged on the happiness of other people. At least you're raising your Pokemon. Because I gave up on trying to make myself happier. My happiness comes from other people at this point. If you like his... Seriously, look at the rest. Just completely different. Take... Ugh. I guess. Stop. No! Why? Okay. I know it's an ad. But that's the last thing I want to see to make me happy. I didn't. I clicked on it. I wasn't watching it, I clicked on it. You wanted me to give it a chance, so I opened it. I wasn't watching it now, I was trying to click on it so I could pause the video. I don't care to change myself. I want people to accept me for me, though. Me changing myself is basically the world telling me I don't like you for you, so you need to fucking change. And that's, that's just... No, that's not fair. You want to see my cut technique? I would show you if I wasn't ill. You know, I have this. Teach it to your Pokemon, you could cut anytime. <laughs> it's not an insta-cure. There is no such thing as an insta-cure. It's all subjective. What helps other people won't always help every... What helps one person won't always help another. So if this helps you, it may not help me. It may not help other people. It all really depends. But there is no such thing. For people who market insta-cure, whatever they like to market, there is no such thing. Because again, remember... Certain actions or certain things may affect certain people in a certain regard, but it doesn't affect everyone the same. So, I, I will look into this. There is There are some things that I may need to do to help me relax. But the way I have, the way, the issues I have, the way I see things is getting help means that you're too weak to do anything on your own. Um, having people request a certain thing to help you improve yourself, all it does to me is just show that I'm not accepted for me, so they want me to change. So when everyone tells me to grow up, shave my hair, stop hating on insects and things, all they're doing is telling me is that they're telling me that I'm just that they don't like me for me. They don't like that I hate insects. They don't like that I like to have my hair long. They don't like that I whatever. They don't like they didn't like that I dressed skater, anime skater at the time back in middle school. So everyone told me to change and dress ghetto. No one liked that I dressed like that. So I was getting stopped by the police and everyone thought I was part of a g gang and doing drugs and no one accepted me for there. So I switched back. And then I've had even more issues trying to just be who I am. Nobody likes me for me. And that's the biggest thing I want to fix is to have people accept me. That's all I want. You're perfect just the way you are is the most depressing thing could someone can say to you. And people say that to me. People have said that to me all the time, mainly women. Because you know, that is a lie. The whole, the whole, oh, you're perfect just the way you are. I never believe. Because then months later, I get dumped. Never believe, oh, you're perfect just the way you are. Because then months later, that girl or guy is going to dump you. And then you're going to feel like complete ass. And then you're going to look at yourself. Am I really all that I can be? Yeah, exactly. Like you just said. Because then you're going to look at yourself. Oh, is this all I am? Look, 
I don't see this as being depressing. I actually see this as being optimistic because, one, it's life teaching me a bunch of this shit from growing up and getting older and dating and, you know, friends that have come and gone. I'm actually not depressed. I'm just talking... We're just talking about a more sensitive topic. I do want to be accepted by the people around me. I'm tired of people telling me that, oh, I look bad this, you need to change that, or you need to do this to get girls that. It's like, let me be happy. Maybe I'd be happy if you guys would accept me. Accept the way I look. Accept that I want to be who I want to be. I'm happy the way I am. I enjoy playing games and I enjoy staying inside. People tell me that I need to get a life. That I need to grow up. That I need to, you know, stop fearing certain things that I fear. Such as insects and shit. Like, and if you work on doing one little thing better, you can become something better. Yeah. Like, generally, I can get into very good topics. Whether it's, whether it's a depressing mood or good mood, it doesn't mean I'm. That doesn't. That doesn't mean I'm in that state right now. I'm actually very happy. I guess. <laughs> can you really? It's really hard to say that you're happy though. Like I don't know. To me, it's really hard to say that when you're happy, because <laughs> there's really no emo- there's no way for me to convey I'm happy right now, but, like, I'm in a good mood, essentially. Yes. Because I have- I have nothing against anybody. I love everybody for who they are. If someone has a problem with me, that's when I have an issue. I'm cool with anybody. And if you're a complete dick to me, fine, you're a dick. But I'm I'm happy. I'm very I'm not sad, I'm not depressed. <laughs> That's a bit of irony. Yes it is. But I don't like the part of them that doesn't like me. Oops. <laughs> I, cool Mew. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I did not mean to come off as that. <laughs> yeah, but people not liking me is not a part of them. <laughs> I just... I just feel like everybody freaking is just against me. It has nothing to do with them. Because all my life growing up, I always felt like people were just trying to change me. People picked on me because I was different, and then I've had people try to change my style, tell me to dress a certain way, and that never worked out, so I ended up switching back because I just got hounded by every other freaking person thinking I was in a gang or some shit. Or worse, and... I just... I just wanted to be accepted. That's all. Yes, I hate the fact that people wanted to change me, but I don't hate the fact that people wanted me to be a specific regard. Because people dislike me. People are going to dislike whatever the hell they dislike. I just want to be accepted. I just don't want to be hated for who I am. Most of my young childhood, I was pushed away and alienated because I was different. I'm tired of it. Mostly by the people I care about most. Oh, I know. Oh, I don't believe in that nonsense. Uh, if this person doesn't like you, then they won't pick on you. If that person picks on you, then they like you. Yeah, I don't believe in that fucking nonsense.
that's another way to push somebody away too. If you don't, if you like somebody, don't don't fucking do that, because that's a way of what happens if somebody gets the wrong idea and then they think you don't like them. That's pushing them away. Then I'm sorry, people are dumb, and it annoys me that there are people out there who literally pick pick on you because they like you, but instead of telling you your re their real feelings. I'm sorry, I find that that to me just annoys me. I guess I'm just the kind of guy who would rather tell somebody straight up outright, Oh, I have feelings for you. I'm not going to be a total dick to you and make fun of you because I like you, but I like you. Instead of, Oh, hey. Oh, hey, you're a bitch, but I like you. No, I have not. No. Yes, I was picked on all my life by people around me, by girls I liked, by friends that I grew up with, and I was even bullied to, to beyond hell. To the point where I just don't... I just don't feel any semblance of happiness with the fact... with the way I am sometimes. Just because the way people have pushed me down and hurt me all of my childhood. So I... It's their fault that I dislike myself in this aspect. In order to truly defeat someone, you have to get to know them. But in order in getting to know them, to know them, you uh, come to love them. Ah. That's a concept in re and that's a concept in life, though, not just that series. Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. That's a concept in actual life. That's... That is a... Actual good philosophy to actually have. So now I bet me just talking about stuff like this is pushing people away or either bringing people in, but... I don't want to feel like I'm scaring anybody, either. The way most of my personal reason my best friend knows me well enough to know where to push this to sting, so when the pu when they push my buttons, although it stings, I went well enough to know my vulnerabilities. <sighs> oh, everyone, all my friends and people that I dated know my vulnerabilities. The problem is, though, they don't understand or accept it, is my problem. Because then they get pissed off whenever I get upset. I'm more engaged than ever, but we may scare off others if they're just here for the cool Mew. Hey, hey. I'll take I'll take the cool Mew viewer. I'll take a cool Mew viewer over scaring people over off any day. However, I appreciate all the people that are here that are actually engaged in these conversations, though, because this is actually where this stream really starts to get real. So I thank you. <laughs> now I'm asleep, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Huh? <laughs> I love you, Quan. <laughs> yeah, anyone who's out, who, anyone else still in chat, any lurkers, I don't want to be calling you out directly because I read somewhere that calling out lurkers is also another way of scaring off people, but. For anyone who's currently in chat, are you engaged to this conversation? Not literally, are you engaged? If you're engaged, congratulations. I wish you two the best of luck. But also, are you engaged in this conversation? <laughs> when I get down to it, I can be pretty damn hilarious, and I can start making some funny things, and normally I'm in a very good mood. 
So I don't, I don't, I don't get upset or, you know, depressed a lot. But there are times when something in a game can upset me to the point where I start to freaking say, say shit like I suck at gaming and life and, you know, that comes out. But it has nothing to do with me actually thinking this. It's actually just, it's me saying it, but I don't really believe it. Like, when, when you say something to someone you're in love with when you're having an argument, you're gonna say something, but do you really mean it a lot of the times? Nah. Like, when you call your significant other a bitch, just because she cheated on you, you don't really mean that. I mean, yeah, she may be a bitch for that, but... Or he. I don't judge. But, like, in reality, are you... Do you really mean that? <laughs> no. Same goes for when I say I suck at video games in life. I mean, yeah, I may think these things, and I may... There might be stuff that I do suck at, but do I really believe I suck at life in video games? No. Stuff that slips out of in the moments of passion is more true than the facade you put on. Maybe for other people. If anyone once thought the crap that comes out of my mouth to be more true than a facade is wrong. That may work for other people, not for me. Because trust me, when a girl cheats on me, I call her a downright... ...colorful language of all sorts of different things. I don't mean any of them. There's nothing in a relationship too small to fight about. It's a great piece of advice I've heard. Well, I'm not denying you. I'm just saying. A lot of the random shit I blurt out, I don't mean. Because I have an anger issue. That's all it is. Hey, if we could have more engaging conversations like this, I just wanted, I always wanted to be... You always wanted Ekans and Arbok to be a good Pokemon? I never used him enough? I've only used them to evolve him. So I don't know how good they really are, and I'm not a competitive Pokemon user. I usually just use the Pokemon I like. Fun, funny thing is, I usually just use the Pokemon that I like, or grew up with, so a lot of my teams never change. I usually use the same six Pokemon over and again, over and over again. So the Pokemon you see right now is basically the team that I always use. Minus maybe... Maybe minus the stupid Venusaur. Ivysaur, because fuck Venusaur. But I usually always have a Blastoise, a Charizard, a Raichu, an Alakazam, maybe uh, another Pokemon to take over Mew's position, maybe an Espeon. Or a Dragonite. But I always I always use the same similar team every iteration. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't like grass. Look. I don't hate on Vol I don't hate Bulbasaur as a Pokemon. I really don't. I just I'm not a big grass trainer. Out of all the grass Pokemon in the games that are in these games, the only one that I actually care about is Victory Bell. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I've never used Victory Bell in battle. Aside from raising him into a Victory Bell or Weeping Bell, I've never used him outside of battle. That just shows you, Victory Bell is my favorite grass Pokemon. And that's it. I never used him. Just throwing that out there. But yeah, no, I have nothing against any of them. I just personally just don't like grass Pokemon. And that's... And that's coming from a guy who's chosen a grass starter in two generations now. Snivy, and the new one, for Sword and Shield. Probably the only two grass starters that seem to actually 
that I actually seem to actually like. And I, I hear that Snivy's not even that good. But do I care? Because no, because that's competitive talk. Like, people act like, oh, this Pokemon sucks. Like, dude, I'm playing the game. <laughs> He's good for when you're playing the base game. Like, why do you talk like a competitive Pokemon is going to make a damn difference in the PvE side of things? Well, I'm. Well, today's your lucky day. I may actually be using Venusaur on my team. I'm giving him a. Sh I'm giving him a chance. That, or I may switch Venusaur to Victory Bell, just because Victory Bell is my favorite Grass starter. Grass starter. Grass type. But I may actually have a Grass on my team. Rarely ever do my my team ever have grass in there. I always usually have every other type but that. Man, if this was Gen 2, I'd have a freaking Golbat on my team for a Crobat. Mm-mm-mm. That's okay, there's so many damn Pokemon and I barely even dent any of them because I always use the same team. That's personally how I am as a player though. Like same with other games, same with like, same with like other games that you can choose like a class. I will always be like a physical fighter class or a class that uses like swords and shit. Like Dark Souls, I will always make a strength, I will always make a quality Dark Souls build, but in the end I will always be a a strength strength user. You can get you, I know I can't. I know I can't. That's why this exists. Who says I can't get Victor Bell and Bell Sprout? <laughs> yeah, if you think I'm emulating this, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not what that was. You're green. Oh. This is blue, though! Blues contain green. Yeah, I get it. Um... My other 3DS. Yeah, I was just trying to show you that it's my other 3DS where I'm going to be using trades. So you will be seeing, you will be seeing Pokemon that are from another game. <sighs> gotcha. That's weird though, even, like, I know blues contain, I know colors are in everything. Whoa. I know, I know there's colors in everything, like blues, just because it's blue doesn't mean anything. Blues contain shades of green and vice versa and all that, so... Regardless of how blue this is, there are green shades in here, hues, blues, it's, blues are, like, every color is made up of hues of very, various different colors. So, like, just because one thing is blue doesn't mean it won't be blotched out of my green screen. But, yeah. I forget that, I forget that blue does that still. Once I get my own space, what I want to do is I want to get a wall that's big enough and just paint it blue and use that as a green screen. That or I want to get a projector screen that just comes down and just use that as a green screen. I do like my green screen, but it kind of limits me as to a chair. And also, this is kind of just bulky. But maybe in a bigger room it would look nicer. But yeah. 
So yeah, on my own time, I am going to be playing Pokemon Blue version. To get any tra any Pokemon that are specific to that version. I'm going to need it for all the evolutions. The other two evolutions. I am going to need it for uh, the other fossil. I already got the three starters. Yeah. And I already have a copy of Ekans, Oddish, and, and Mankey. Now I just need a copy of Growlithe. I need to catch another Abra to trade to get me Mr. Mime. And I need a Poliwhirl for the Jinx. And then I need a few other red specifics. Mew is the only glitch I'm doing, because that's, to me, to me is not enough to be considered a glitch. Yes, it's a glitch, but it's legit to me. But the three starters weren't obtained via glitch, though. The Mew was the only one that was attained via glitch. It's still legit. But no, Mew is the only glitched attained Pokemon. The starters, I trade. I traded those. I didn't glitch for those. But, even though it is a glitch, it's still legit. May not be legit enough to go over Pokebank, but does that matter? Nah, nah, I have a, I have a Mew. I have a, I have a, I have a Mew. If anyone wants to care for logistics of things, the legitimacy, I have a legitimate Mew. I don't need, I don't need this Mew. This Mew is just for me to complete the Pokedex. I don't care to send him over to next gen if he's ever able to ever go to the next gen hell yeah free mew but if not i'm in no i'm in no loss board games but do you play many board games official actual board games like monopoly because i used to as a kid i used to play board games all the time shit like sorry monopoly and all those those games are fine I don't mind, I don't mind official, like, in-person strategy games. But, when it comes to, like, tactics... Oh. Can this thing just situate? I keep fumbling with it. Only because it keeps, the, the microphone's a little too heavy. Um, when it comes to, like, tactics and stuff like those games, I'm not a big fan of, but when it comes to official board games, I'm fine with. Ah, well. Well, hello there. Looks like you guys are friends. It's, it's nice of you to join. Don't worry about lurking if you're comfortable playing and chilling, enjoying the stream. But yeah. Well, if I can ever get a group of people together, if I can ever, like, whenever I visit back home and I can get a group of friends together who are down to, like, do a, like, a board game night, hell yeah, I'd stream, I'd stream us playing some board games. Stuff like Pokemon Master Trainer, Monopoly, or Sorry, or Heaven Forbid, Mousetrap. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of those I would love. The conversation was getting heavy when you showed up, just checking if we had... Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, it's people like you that keep me, that make me happy. Having conversations like these is what makes me happy. So I appreciate you guys. But yes, in terms of, I don't know what other Pokemon I can hack, or hack, whatever you want to call it, glitch. Mew is the only one. The starters were tra were caught, were traded. They weren't caught. They were traded. Um, there are much better games than those you named. Mousetrap may still be the. 
Oh, those are the games that I can think of because those are the games I had as a kid. I'm, there's plenty of board games that I've never played. There's games like Risk and... Uh... Dragon Ball Monopoly. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, there's, there's other games that I've never played before. Those are just games that came off the top of my head. Ah, are we? I just don't have the people. I don't have the people. Even then, most of my, my crew that I used to hang out with consisted of really just four or five of us. Well, yeah, that's good enough for a nice board game night. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends aren't going to be into that. Aren't going to be, aren't, aren't going to be into that. Or at least aren't going to be down to s situate to be playing the same few, several board games a whole night or whatever. Me is the only one that just needs to be glitched into the game because of the game freaks BS about localized events and shenanigans. Well, I'm not trying to get a Mew onto the next gen anyway. I ha like I said, I have a Mew. I have a legitimate Mew that is currently on my Omega Ruby, I think, right now. This was just here to complete the Pokédex because I'm going to be doing I'm going to be completing the Pokédexes or at least try to. <laughs> For a lot of them. Many of the games play best at four. No, I'm not doubt I'm not doubting you. I just don't I just don't have a group of nerdy friends who want to get together to do that. Like if I had if I had a bigger group of friends that I can just rely on, you know, when I go home and be like, hey, let's let's have a board night every week so I can stream it. I don't know if that'll happen. Nope. Unfortunately not. He cannot, no. And yourself in Central Kentucky. Hit me up for a boy. Hey, hell yeah. Yeah, a lot of evolution learned moves is bugged. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> Look at it, you Lance. But yeah, no, I definitely would love to hit you up for anyone who wants to meet me in the future, or anyone I meet in the future, whether it's off a, off a Twitch, or if it's dudes at a convention or something. Hell yeah, I'm down for some board nights. I love actual board games. I just don't care for, like, strategy board games, like, video games. I'm not big into, like, strategy strategy, like, you know, stuff like tactics. Tactical. Now, does that mean I will not? Does that mean I will never dabble into Final Fantasy Tactics for my Final Fantasy series? No. If you guys want to see me play some of these Final Fantasy games or other tactical games, feel free to request them. Just, just know that I may not be the biggest into them. Oh yeah, there's an item. There's a secret item. Musket. Butterfree doesn't... Don't learn Confusion. Charizard don't... Learns Wing Attack. Metapod doesn't learn Harden. Lenny Face. Gyarados don't learn Bite. Let me splash. Things that just are only fixed in Pokemon Yellow or on the Japanese. Wow. Hmm. I mean, I'm used to the whole thing. I'm used to a lot of the bugged shit. And like I said, just because the whole thing with Mew, I don't consider it... I don't consider it cheating or fake or otherwise because there's no, there's nothing to do so. So I consider it legitimate regardless of the fact. Glitch or not, legitimate to me. I may not be able to put him on Poke Bank or whatever. Doesn't give Game Freak the right to sit there and label it as fake. That's just me though. That's not for a casual game night. That's a whole other thing. Board game is an old, complicated game from 1978 called Magic Realm. Huh. Never heard of it. But that's... I don't mind... It, it, 
in the future, what I want to do is I do want to have, like, if I ever... If I get to the... P isn't... Isn't a glitch? You just grabbed the original little bit. An original ditto. Mew, an original ditto. Nah. That's <laughs> uh, the whole the whole ditto being a failed Mew clone. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I know this ain't gonna hurt. Why did I do Thundershock? Just do Quick Attack. Uh, you're not wrong. I mean, the one of the two spots to get a Ditto is... One of the spots to get a Ditto is the final floor of the dungeon where Mew was freaking cloned. Him and Mew share the same color schemes, both non, both shiny and regular. They share a similar move pool, being able to be the only Pokemon that can transform. So, Ditto is a failed Mew clone. Yes, they also share the same weight. Sorry, I did not want to did not want to say its specifics if I wasn't sure on the weight. I. I don't remember the weight, but if they share that as well, then that's even more of a... Even more of a sign that Ditto is a failed Mew clone. But I wasn't sure on their size. Ditto and Mew do not look like they would weigh the same. I'm sorry, they look like they would weigh completely opposites. But I'm not above any of the fan theories. I some of them are actually very legitimate. And then there's some theories involving like Lavender Town's music theme causes children to die or some shit. I mean that might have been true, but like the fuck? I'm sorry, that's still better than the Ash saw Ho-Oh and his wish to be a forever a kid was granted, so now Ash is a either A in a perpetual coma or the reason why Ash never ages. Theory. I'm sorry, you can have all your Ash is forever 10 theory to justify the fact that Ash will never age, but the fact that he never ages is because freaking Nintendo and... Anyone else wants to make him perpetually 10 because of its fan base. Has nothing to do with anything else. As much as some of those Ash theories are actually quite sound. The whole theory about Ash being in a perpetual coma is actually pretty sound. Doesn't make, doesn't change the fact that it's a dumb idea. So after I heal, I need to come back here and look for some Pokemans. Also, get me a freaking Diglett. Cartoon series where the characters age, Bart Simpson would be in his early 40s. You're not wrong. Yes, I get that. Cartoon characters, like, never seem to be... Never seem to show age. But the main reason why Ash is never aged is because of its fan base. Ash, they want to keep Ash 10, so the kids who keep... Cha who watch Pokemon and the kids who come... And the kids who later come into Pokemon when they are, you know, get old enough or whatever in the next generation. It's because they want a character for them to, uh, to aspire to. Because every time when you watch a show, there's always a character that you look up to or whatever. Ash, for a lot of people, was that character. For a lot of young 10-year-olds. Or, you know, kids who were younger than that. In my, in my age, I was younger than 10 when Pokemon first came out. But yeah. I just clearly explained in the game because the last thing they need to put is an MRRB. No, oh, that's true. That's also true. <laughs> You're not wrong. You aren't wrong. P 
People killing Pokemon? No. People killing other people? Pokemon killing other people? War? Dude sacrificing everything? For a Pokemon? Uh, looking at you as... Sacrificing everything that he believed in for the sake of a Pokemon that he freaking loved? I mean, shit, I want that. I want that kind of relationship that he had there with that Pokemon. It's just like, he sacrificed everything for a Pokemon who left him or whatever because he had this massive war. Like, I don't know. Just the love and friendships that some people have with their Pokemon. I want that. That's why I wanted Pokemon to be real as a kid. Yeah, 10-year-old going out in the world to fight his genetically altered pets against others to try to dominate the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pokemon would be a scary place if it was real. I mean, hell, there's talk about deaths and wars and shit in this generation before any of these were, like, conceived in later generations and later fleshed out. It's ridiculous. Alright, you. Mew is only really on my team because someone in chat wanted it. I really don't personally use legendaries until I either end game and grind, mostly. I really don't even... I'm just having fun. I personally don't even really need to use any specific Pokemon. I can use whatever and just have fun with the game. That's all I'm trying to do is just have some fun, work my way up to Gen 8, even though it's out and I've played a bit of it. I still want to, you know, do a road to Gen 8. I have! Uh, it wasn't much of one, but I have. It's on YouTube. <laughs> it's it's incomplete, but I did a heart gold nuzlocke and I didn't complete it because editing that editing on YouTube was a pain in the ass. Cacnea kick turns Dex's entry slipped so well into Gen 3 that when the writers seemed the nightmares and yes, oh my god, yes. Them a few times on red never finished. Yeah, I did I only started one nuzlocke on heart gold. And I never finished it, only because editing videos and recording for YouTube was a pain in the ass. And re editing DS games was the worst, because I had to do a layout and everything. But other than that, Nuzlocks aren't bad. If you want to see me do a Nuzlocke in the future, I always can. Oh my god, the Cinnabon Island had a few unlucky combat. I made it to, uh, let's see, my, my stopping point was Price. I made it to, I made it to Mahogany Town, but I didn't face Price yet. Um, Canewood Gym Leader took out most of my team. Most of my team is gone. That's all you really needed to know. Like, you can watch that, you can watch whatever I have of that on YouTube. But I remember getting my ass rocked by, uh... What's-his-face? Chuck's, uh... Polyrath. I didn't grind enough. But, still, that, that... That's a good thing about Nuzlocke's, too, is that... I don't oftenly grind. Like, in Pokemon, I don't grind as often in this game as I do other turn-based RPGs or, far, you know, and stuff like that. So, it, it it's... It's nice. To have some challenge. And that's what Nuzlocke's are for. Because Pokemon are too easy. Pokemon is just way too easy. So if anybody wants a challenge. And never played a Nuzlocke before. Look into Nuzlocke's. They are amazing if you want a challenge. What do I call... I'm grinding. Yes. Yes. I said I don't grind all that often. In Pokemon. Pokemon is the RPG I grind the least in. If I grind... Trust me, if I grinded in Pokemon as much as I've been grinding in Final Fantasy, a Nuzlocke would be no problem. You want to know why I'm grinding? Because this team that I have was literally just got. 
Mew was literally just got yesterday at level 7. The starters are base level at level 6 or 5. Bulbasaur specifically, because I failed on Gary because I had bad RNG. So he was never, he never leveled up to 6. So I had to level everyone up. You can't remember what game you were playing when you found me. Was it Mario RPG or Mega Man Legends? Neither, because I didn't stream any of those games. Yet. Odd. What? <laughs> I mean, I did stream Mega Man... I did stream Mega Man X and classic Mega Man, but I've never played Mega Man Legends on stream yet. Nor have I ever played Mario RPG in my life. I own it. On the mini SNES or whatever. But I've never officially played it. That's how I found most... Huh. Odd. Well, you found me somehow. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it, but I did not do either of those games. You can go and look on my Twitch and my YouTube. Pokemon don't need too much grinding because the type of vantage chart. You don't need to fight a level 45 level Rapidash with a level 45 another poke if you have a level 30. That's true. Eternal Darkness is a game that I have been going through, yes. I need to get back to that. Thank you for reminding me. I really do need to finish that. That's a that's a requested game. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's why Pokemon doesn't have any strategy. <laughs> and that's why strategy in Pokemon games are terrible. See, because Pokemon isn't true strategy to me. That's like... Oh, it has weaknesses and resistances. I get it. There's strategy in that. But when you when the whole game is based around what Pokemon is weak to what, the strategy is kind of thrown out the window. Huh. Interesting. The thing is is I don't need to grind in any games. I actually enjoy the grind. I enjoy grinding. I'm grinding out of the pure excitement and enjoyment of it. Mario RPG is a game I want to look into, though, because I love Paper Mario. I've seen a bit of Mario RPG. I actually see where Paper Mario gets its ideas. I see where they were coming from. I see a lot of what Paper Mario is does better. Or has improved upon the Mar uh, Super Mario RPG's ideals. Like the whole uh, hit A at a certain time thing to uh, do greater attacks or greater damage in a, in a combat. I, I see where that's implemented. I see how that's coming from. Paper Mario was where I played growing up. I did not play Mario RPG. It's not a hard sort of kids game, but it's endless fun. Oh no, I love RPGs. Mario RPG, I've seen it. It's definitely up my alley. I just haven't played it. Paper Mario, though. That was my jam as a kid. I don't know. I love RPGs. They're my favorite genre. My specific favorite RPGs of them all are action RPGs. I love Kingdom Hearts. I love what I played of the Tales of... I played only Tales of Zilla, but I enjoyed I enjoyed the combat of Tales of Zilla to the point where I'm going to dabble into the other Tales of games. I enjoy the Yis, it's pronounced Yis, the Y-S series, Yis. I've been playing a bit of Yis, so I enjoy a lot of the combat of that. I own, I own a bunch of Tales of games, but I've only played Zilla 1 and Zilla 2. I have yet to dabble in any of them. Yes, books one and two. I have a virtual console only. Nice. I have the newest one, or not the newest one, but the one on the Switch. I was playing the one on the Switch. I have Origins. I have several of them. I have I have several of them on the PSP and one or two on the PS4. So I have quite a few of them to dabble on. But the one I was playing on the Switch was pretty fun. I enjoy it. I love I love that kind of combat. Also. It, also, another good game that I love the combat from is Monster Hunter. Which, Monster Hunter and Yeast play similarly in terms of, like, its action combat and, like, farming for different items to, like, 
different materials to like f cook food or you know fuse and to make other items like you know this item and this item make a potion or you know you can take these and make a f make meat out of it or cook food out of it that that kind of aspect it has that aspect similar to monster hunter also kind of similar to how dragon ball kakarot is monster hunter crafting is amazing yes yeah it's it's kind of similar to that it has a crafting system where you collect different different things to make different food or whatever. It doesn't have the Monster Hunter or Monster Hunter crafting like here's this monster, beat it 10 times, get its armor parts and then craft it into this armor. It doesn't have any of that, but it's still a great concept. Hmm. I've dabbled in Monster Hunter Freedom Monster Hunter Freedom World or Freedom Hunter Unite and I've dabbled into Monster Hunter World and also Monster Hunter Ultimate Generations are the only few that I dabbled in, plus the 3DS Monster Hunter, which that didn't last long. Oh wait, did I just accidentally kill that drowsy when I was trying to catch it? Oops. That's what happens when I chat too much. <clears throat> yeah, if that's a game you guys want to see me play again, I haven't played it in a while. I need I need to return to it so I can complete the Iceborne DLC. I just haven't been in the mood for Monster Hunter. Or last time I played it, I for some reason just got very bored, or something didn't agree with me, or something. I don't know, but something happened, and I just didn't continue. But I need to continue Iceborne. I also need to get back on Demon Souls so I can go on continue on to Bloodborne and get on to Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls is probably one of my favorite modern series of today besides Sekiro. Sekiro is probably my one of my favorite modern games of today. S but Dark Souls is probably one of my favorite franchises. So that's another RP a, uh, action RPG that I love. Makes me sad because most of the content is only for online, which is now defunct. I recently played through and got as far as I can. And, oh my god, that sucks! Most of the content is only online? That sucks! That's rough. Because I want to go through and play a lot of these old Monster Hunter games on stream, but I'm not I'm not great at a lot of the older ones. But I am getting better at them because I've been playing Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, which goes back to, you know, the... Well, the, the earliest one I played was the one on the PSP. Freedom Hunter Unite. Or Freedom Unite. So Monster Hunter Ultimate Generations for the Switch goes back to those those days. So I've never played anything older than that. Certain level, but then after that, you're supposed to get parties together and keep progressing. That's... Okay, I like the idea that Monster Hunter is trying to be in... A... Like... It's, it's trying to be an MMO without being an MMO, but limiting game progression... Like that is dumb, or limiting being able to beat a video game is dumb. We online now is dead. They really should not be taking down some of these services, though. Like, I get it, it's no longer probably used or probably doesn't have money, but it's just like... Stop... Stop killing off some of these services, though. I think the Wii and the 3DS, I don't know about the Wii, but the 3DS is probably the best that the the best Nintendo service is going to get in my opinion. The Wii had a pretty good store too. Had some good stuff on there for 64 stuff and this the Wii U also had like some stuff on there too. But sadly like the biggest But sadly like 
of course they're gonna die out. It's the same reason, but worse, I cannot play Fantasy Star Universe. Because it's dead? Or because Universe was actually just a bad game? You can't even play the single-player version without access to the- Wow, that sucks. Hmm... I mean, that's why I didn't play the Xbox version. Because I couldn't. Also, they made you pay for it. The last, P the last, the last PSU I played was the original PS2 version and the PSP versions. The Xbox version was the one here. It's like, oh, here, lay. buy this in order to play our content. Go fuck yourself. There's supposedly a patch thingy for it, but it's not really stable, and I'm not that good with computers. Ah. Uh. Well, if you care, I don't know if you're talking about the official universe, but there is a private server called Clementine. If you can get that going, you could probably play your Fantasy Star Universe without any f worries of bullshit. If you can get that up. But Fantasy Star Universe Clementine has a private server. If that's what you're talking about, then never mind. I assumed you were talking about official server, though. Fantasy Star Universe was great. I had issues with it because at the time I was just getting off of PSO. And even then, if you really want to count me as getting off of it, I really actually wasn't. It's just PSO spent Dreamcast up to Xbox original most of my time. And by the time PSU came out, I was just like, do I really want to play another MMO again, even though it's the same, like, franchise? It's just... And the differences that PSU offered and changes, it just... I just... I don't know. For some reason, it just didn't... It just didn't agree with me, or I don't know, I just couldn't keep up with it. I don't know, just after spending so many tireless hours and years on PSO, switching over to another game that's even in, even in the similar franchise, or same franchise, it's just the changes alone, just for some reason, I just didn't didn't agree with me. The game is great. I lo PSU was amazing. I've had a lot of endless fun co-oping the, uh, the PSP version of that game with my best friend. But... Just something about PSU, or something about just that, just didn't agree with me. I don't know. Same with PSO2. Like, as much as I love PSO2, I still cannot find them any more fun than PSO. Hey, thank you for thank you for joining the conversation while you did. Good night is you is uh, good night to you as well, and I uh, hope to see you around in the near future. Thank you for sticking around. I know when the conversations get good, this I get I can get very very entertaining and it it can be pretty fun to watch and good to come hang out with. And then there's times where I just say the weirdest things and people don't like, but have a good one though. See you see you next time. Before you go, if you're already gone, I'm sorry, but feel free to join the Discord. If you want to... Damn it. Yeah, there he goes. If you want to join the Discord, feel free to uh, stay in contact with, a with me and a bunch of other fans of the channel. The first link. The second one is just a backup. But, yeah. Feel free to join for anyone who's here. I have two. Again, the first one is the more important one. The second one was just a backup because me and my friend made a account for me and him to chat and actually stream and talk. But then we started to grow. So then we made another Discord for no reason. <laughs> but they're, they're there. I didn't realize I missed a train or two. Oops. But yeah, see though. Despite having uh, some issues 
I still get people to come in and I still get people to chat. And once that all goes down, conversations start happening. And then that's when the chat, that's when, that's when I start to get more interesting is when I'm starting to talk. Talk more. And that's all I want. And I have a hard time just talking normally. Because I really don't know what to say, like, when I first start up a stream and leading into whenever a person comes in, or at least leading into conversations to make enjoyable things for people to, you know, actually come in and say hey to, or whatever. Normally I'm just outright quiet, or I say random things that's happening on screen. Otherwise, I'm not a very talkative person. Because I'm playing these games on stream, yes, but I'm also playing them normally as well. Like, there's no other change in that. Okay, so we need Diglett. Uh, we're coming up on an Onyx soon, too. Grand. Who's all here? Yeah, in retrospect, I think playing Smash Bros. was just an avenue for me and my friends to have a deep int conversations I would never have otherwise if we were talking without being a little, being a little distracted. Indeed. No, that, that's true. And sometimes, even though you're friends with somebody, there's certain things that may make you say, or, you know, have conversations with them that you would otherwise never have a conversation about. Certain things will bring certain things out. Spiro uh, Arba... Is that an error? Someone, someone needs to get fired for that. No, I'm saying this is this is back in the late. This is this is late '90s or this is early 2000s, man. <laughs> but someone made a mistake in this guidebook, though. <laughs> whoever whoever did this guidebook stated that there's a common Arbok to be found. And the best was when I'd punctuate a solid point in the conversation with a solid falcon punch. See? No? You can't come up with anything better than that. The, the pun game is real. Damn, all that from a pound? I need to finish that. Like, I don't know why I stopped my Smash story, my Smash 5 story playthrough. But for some reason, I was just... I'm got, I'm kind of getting annoyed by some of the long-ass, like, s main story playthroughs that they're adding into Smash. I didn't, I didn't mind the original, like, first two. But the third, fourth, and fifth ones, I just don't really care for what they add. Just, just give me a simple story mode that I beat the shit out of everybody with. Not something like... An actual adventure, damn it all. And that's why a taco is a sandwich and a hot dog is not. I don't... Okay. That's... Yeah, that's a definite conversation that you probably never have unless you're beating the shit out of your friends in a fight. Mm. All right, so we got D Diglett, right? I just call him. Yes. What counts as a sandwich is my favorite to bring up in boring stream chats. So wait, you not bringing that up until now? Does that mean my chat hasn't been boring? Am I pushing it? I'm sorry.
Yeah, but if if you're bringing that up in a boring stream chat, then would that chat not be boring because you're talking into that conversation or you're lightening it up? Or would that chat be boring enough to the point where you're breaking the ice by bringing that question up? Because you're obviously engaged enough into that conversation to even stick around. Most people would have left by that point, or at least by this point. So, to me, that's not really a boring chat. At least to me, anyway. No, but I'm talking about what you just stated. Regardless of that fact, I'm still talking about what you just stated, though. Because you said you you normally do like to bring that up as your favorite thing for boring chats, but you didn't bring that up. My question was now, does that does that mean my chat's boring? Or and if you do and if you do bring that up in a chat that's boring, is that chat really boring because you're engaged in that chat enough to stay with that person? I'm just I'm just dabbling into what you said. It has nothing to do with our conversation. It's just me being a nitpicker. Look, I'm talking more. Isn't that what you guys want? Well, my mic is not even on screen. Oh, barely. Usually when there's a few interesting people in chat, but the conversation has died down. Sorry. I mean, my chat's never usually lively. I appreciate I appreciate the people that are here. I appreciate you making it livelier. But my chat is never normally that lively. Shit, the liveliest I've seen my chat has been many, many moons. It's been many moons. The last time I've seen people actually engage in my chats, probably since I was doing PSO, and this was like maybe a year ago, or however long ago. It feels like it was my start, back at my start, stardom. But no. Popular streams are just stupid with hundreds of people. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that you enjoy my content, thank you. Or I, I appreciate that you enjoy being here, regardless if... I'm engaging enough. I appreciate that I'm engaging enough to you to where you don't find it that it's completely boring and it's not nowhere because obviously you wouldn't have joined or people would not join in. I appreciate it. I mean, normally I don't have three to eight people. Normally I have at least one or two, at most. <laughs> Join for the Eternal Dark to stay for the emo. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. You're the third person who wants that game. Well, the first person who wants that game to return is the guy that requested it. You're the second person I've seen who is talking about that game because you obviously found me on it. There's a third person that I saw commenting on my one of my YouTube videos of Eternal Darkness. So obviously there's people who want that game. And I what I'm trying to say is I am going to be coming back to it. I just I'm trying to clear some other games off this field. Oh no. I'm getting back to that. I'm actually enjoying it. I'm just bad at puzzles. <laughs> I'm just bad at puzzle games. Evident in my uh, Silent Hill playthrough. If you want to go and check that out, ugh. Like, uh, no, I don't. Shit. Who was the last guy I was? Um. I think I just got done with uh. I know I was the... I remember... I know I was in the... I was... 
Well, here's the thing is, I remember there was a dude that I was that took- that I went back to do the, uh... Part with the church. I went back there again. But at a different time. And I was another dude. Who I needed to find out the truth behind their... Bullshit. Or whatever. Um, yes, Luther. Yes, that was the last character I was. I know I, re I know I beat his part, and I think I returned to the girl. But I think Paul Luther was the last part I did, because I remember being at the church, part two. I remember meeting up with the dude, uh, the body of the dude that I was prior. I fought him. I ended up going under the cellar, where you had to, like, open up a secret door under the cellar or something like that. I remember... I remember exiting. But yeah, if you want to go and check out on YouTube, feel free to go and do that, and you can refresh my memory. But yeah, I think, uh, if I recall, if my memory serves me correctly, that's where I'm at. Don't worry, that game will be coming back. Don't worry. I just wanting I just want to get a lot of these other stuff that I've been wanting to do for a while now out of the way. But the thing is about Eternal Darkness is it is a requested game, which means that they personally spent the in-chat currency on this request, so the game I need to actually beat. That was my that was my plan. That was my gimmick. That's my ideal for those. If anyone requests a game via my in-game chat currency, or in-stream chat currency, I have to play it as long as they require me to. Now, if you go out right and just type in chat and say, can you play this game? I can say yes, but I can also dictate how long that game is played for. But if you actually request me to play a game via my Masetta currency, then that's your decision after that. And one of them was, requests me to play that. So when I hit 2K, you'll play Super Mario RPG. I mean, I have no problem with that. But why am I playing it for when you hit 2k? Wait, why... Why am I doing something for your milestone? I mean, yeah. If you want me to play that, sure. <laughs> oh, wait, are you saying when you... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I finally just caught on to that. For some reason, my mind went, so when I hit 200k followers or viewers or whatever my mind went there for a second i was like why <laughs> and then the moment it hit me i was like oh yeah he's talking about the money yeah oh yeah for, feel free to request away the reason i really got to get back to that too is because i have a i have another request for half-life my one of my friends requested me to play half-life for some reason, that's where my mind went. Not so much your YouTube channel, but just in general. Just in general, I thought you were talking about, like, <laughs> talking about that. You're almost at 2k views total. Hell, I'd be shocked if any of my videos reached over 100. Which, I have several Pokemon videos that's reached over in the thousands. I was very shocked when I found a lot of those. If you go and look up some of my older Pokemon stuff, some of them have reached the thousands view. But, like, even that surprised me. I don't know. I've had a lot of people tell me I'm very underrated. And I see it. I definitely see that I am very underrated. I have potential of being better. I'm just... I'm not the greatest at holding a conversation. That's nothing that I can change. That's something that plagues me into my personal issue, my personal life as well. I've never been great at a conversationalist. However, get me into a conversation that I know, and I'll freaking go off. At work, at back when I worked at Chick Fil A, so many people had to tell me to shut up for how much I was talking, which is odd. Which is odd if you know me personally, because I rarely talk. Especially, like, if, if you see me hanging out with family or friends or anything like that, and I don't know what they're going on about, most of the time I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm quiet. But, like, 
at Chick-fil-A all the time, I was getting told to shut up because a lot of the people there are into games and anime and stuff like that. It, I, so I can go on and on and talk about Dragon Ball Z and all this other junk and people had to tell me to stop. I think I'm good on the training. Nope. And I don't care. Everyone can sit there and bitch at me for this. I'm not the guy who cares about HM Slaves. I'll teach... I'll teach cut to whoever the hell I want. I'm just throwing that out there for anyone who may bitch. Why are you teaching cut to a Charizard or whoever? Because it's convenient. And I'm just playing the base game. I'm not doing any PvP aspect. I don't care how bad a certain move is. I'm teaching my Pokemon a move just so I can get through the area. Cause... HM Slaves? I'm sorry, no. That is true, he can learn all that. But why Why do that when I have Venusaur or Charizard? Why do that when I have a Venusaur and Charizard to learn Cut? Why, why sacrifice that move on Mew when I have... Two better HM slaves. Mew Mew can learn fly and surf. He can learn the better moves. Mew is awesome. But why do that when I can teach Mew Thunderbolt? <laughs> Thunderbolt, flamethrower, surf and fly. That's normally Mew. That's normally my move pool for Mew. Yes, they are. Useful in combat and out of combat. I don't know, every time people bitch about HMs, I always think of Fly and Surf, because they always bitch about HMs, and it's like, why are you in why are you talking about HMs? I I get it, a lot of HMs suck, but you're not mentioning that Surf and Fly are actually decent moves. It's just like, every time I hear someone bitching about HMs, they always seem to include the good stuff in there as well. It's just like, Surf is good, though. Go ahead, kill me, Pikachu. I just didn't want to swap out. But yeah, no, I just get lazy. I just don't like to have to withdraw a Pokemon out of a box every 15 seconds. Oh, and trust me, when I move on to the Pokemon Fire Red Dragon Ball ROM hack, uh, Dragon Ball Z Team Training, they are going to force me, unless they updated the game since I last played it, they are going to force me to use an HM Slave. Because in order to surf, you need to withdraw Aqua. Aqua is the only Dragon Ball character in the Pokemon ROM hack that can freaking surf. So yes, I am going to be withdrawing him every freaking now and then. I think he's literally the only Dragon Ball character in that game that is a water-based uh, water combatant. At least in the terms of Dragon Ball Pokemon aspect. For, an, for anyone who never played it before, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Team Training, it's a Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green ROM hack with Dragon Ball characters. I'll be playing that eventually. For anyone who cares, I have a semi semi. I want to say it's semi-finished, but it's not finished at all. I mean, it's halfway done. I kind of had all the recording done for the entire ending half of it, but I never posted it and then later lost it when my hard drive crashed. But I have a bunch of it on YouTube if anyone cares. I just never finished it. I got all the way up to Endgame, recorded me battling the Elite Four, fought a bunch of the post-game stuff, I was in the process of capturing a lot of the endgame legendary characters 
and then never finished. And then as I was recording a lot of these episodes, I'm like, what am I doing recording these? I don't do YouTube anymore. Right, at my time when I did swap out Pidgeot for Charizard, I was like, yeah, I'll just have Charizard learn fly. For some reason, I didn't think about that, that Charizard can't learn fly in this version. <sighs> I forgot that was a thing. It wasn't until late, it wasn't until recently now that this guy reminded me of that. Memory's good. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but granted, yeah, there was a lot of things going on. I've been playing a lot of other games, and work. And for a blind playthrough, I'm not gonna... For my first playthrough of a game, it's gonna be hard for me to remember a lot of stupid shit like that. So yeah, I was surprised I even remember that. Yeah. I'm not sure if I did anything um, involving the girl back in the house. I may have to watch a little bit of that video just to see what exactly I last did as her. But yeah, I remember beating that. Oh, I'm a little over halfway. Thank you. Well. Would you like to see some of that then? I mean, I can get on that here. If you want to see some of it, see more of it. I didn't watch the very end. You got back to the girl and looked like you wandered. Yeah, I probably was doing a little bit and then got off. I don't remember what I did with her, though. Because the next game in line for a request, my best friend requested me to play Half-Life. Uh, that's a series I've never played. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm doing what I do play what I play. Uh, just because I... The reason I decided to just do whatever the hell I wanted is because a schedule is just too stressful. I don't know if you guys agree, but when I did YouTube, doing a certain amount of games a day or whatever, or getting a certain amount of videos out, it was just stressful, and I just wasn't making that quota. Damn it. Hey, there's a switch under here. Okay. Damn you! Oh, come on. I know I'm only checking the first two rows. I know this puzzle's dumb, and I'm only checking the first two rows. Only because I don't... Yes! Because I didn't feel like battling everyone right now. There we go. Because what I like to do is I like to open that puzzle, and then I battle everybody. The puzzle's dumb. <laughs> it is very dumb. <laughs> it's also easy. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's it's still annoying. Even in the remakes, did they not do anything with this puzzle? No. I'm just gl I'm glad that the puzzle's easy. But no, it is a very bad puzzle. For my favorite gym leader... Really? Not really my favorite gym at all. Gym's design is terrible. I love electric type Pokemon. And Lieutenant Surge will always be one of my favorite gym battles that Ash has ever fought. Seeing Raichu pummel Pikachu into the ground was one of the best things ever. Turned instantly turned. And that's what instantly made Raichu and electric type my favorite typing and my favorite Pokemon of all time. Blastoise will always be my favorite... First starter, Raichu and Blastoise will be my, be my top favorite Pokemon of all. His gym is horrid, yes. But yeah, no. It is that battle with Ash and Surge, though, that made him and Raichu my favorite Pokemon of all. And Water, Blastoise and Water type will always be my favorite typing. 
initially, but like Surge is the main reason why I love electric types. And to be honest, I just because I love certain typings doesn't mean I use it a lot either. I rarely use a lot of electric types. I'll use some. But again, using the similar team that I always do, I rarely ever use a lot of Pokemon. Koga is a cool gym. Ugh. <laughs> it's true, they're not. To be honest, I enjoyed Koga's gym. I enjoyed what they did with Koga's gym in uh, Let's Go, the Pokemon... Go games for the Switch. I enjoyed what they cut. They it's the same thing, but you can. Uh, I just enjoyed what how they did it. Like I don't know. putting that gym design in a three dimensional area uh, space. I just enjoyed it. It's the same gym. It's just three dim. It's just in a three D space. I just like how they made it look. The walls are. I don't remember, I remember getting somewhat tripped up on it, not that I know, like, not that I don't know where the walls are, it's more like I don't remember the layout of the gym. But, it's still the same, I just liked how they, they, they made it into 3D space. They also made, I, th I if I recall correctly, I think they made a lot of the trainers actually look like Koga. So then when you talk to them, they would change into their normal characters to symbolize that they're actual, like, you know, ninjas. Um, Sabrina's gym, I think, was made better in Pikachu Go, I believe. I'm not sure. I know it was the same warping hell, but I think it was fixed a little bit better. I know... That's what they did in Gen 2? Yeah. Two, they were in disguise. Yeah, I think if I recall correctly, that's what they did. Um, same with uh, Silphco. I think they made. I made. I think they made both of those warp hells a lot nicer in the re in the uh, Pikachu Eevee Go games. They also added in parts for your Pokemon character. So there's parts in those games where you need like Pikachu or Eevee to go and get something, which I actually liked. They actually gave them a reason to be your partner character. Not just some useless gimmick because of Pokemon. But you actually needed, like, Pikachu to go somewhere to get something. To go under, like, some certain shoot that you couldn't fit in or something. I actually enjoyed that. But yeah, if I recall correctly, I think all of Koga's gym, gym battlers were uh, in some sort of uh, disguise. Gimmick to make use of your gimmick. Hey, it was a very clever idea. I love what they did with Pikachu Go and Eevee Go. I love the shiny catching in that game. I love the idea of being able to just see the Pokemon on the air and the map. That's what I love about the Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield hasn't been a, too appealing to me, but like the game is still good, and I really enjoy their new co their new style of seeing every Pokemon on the field because that's something I've been wanting. Because I loved Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Ranger is another side game that I loved, just because it it was still Pokemon, but it added a different style of battle. That's all Pokemon needs. Add something new, and maybe you'll enjoy it. Pokemon Ranger, the idea sounds dumb, but the com the the actual idea behind a lot of it is actually very fun. And I may say I'm not a big fan of a lot of the uh, strategy-style games, but I'm sure Pokemon Conquest is very fun if I give it a chance. And I'm pretty sure I will. In the future, I may give it a chance. I have nothing against giving it a chance. It's just the only thing about it is I just don't like is I just don't like that it's like, oh, here's these old-timey people from ages past battling with your favorite Pokemon characters. It's kind of dumb. But... I have no in I have no hatred against any of these things. I'll try them all out. Like I enjoyed a lot of the side Pokemon games that aren't even what Pokemon is. It just shows that a company can make a Pokemon game and use it as a different mechanic or a different style of gameplay and still make a unique thing out of it. Like that's why I for what it was, I enjoyed um what's that stupid Pokemon toy game on the Wii uh, and the Switch or the Wii and Wii U? Where they're like toys. <sighs> that was fun for what it was. 
I actually prefer, I actually just prefer, you know, trying to collect all the Pokemon in that game, not so much just play the game. I enjoy trying to see what Pokemon I get out of it. But that game was fun for what it was. What is this? Body Slam? Eh. Rest. Alright, well... You're not gonna be seeing... Oh, man. Alright. Kid, what do you think you're doing here? You don't want... You won't live long in combat, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, kid. Electric Pokemon saved me during what war? What? War, Surge! <laughs> I wanna know, was this the war that... The supposed war that, I don't know, um... X and Y mention? Because X and Y mentioned a big war. Was it... Was... Was that the war? Because didn't they say in X and Y that they were at war with Kanto? At one point? They zap my enemies into paralysis. The same will do to you. I'm assuming that if that was the case, if my memory serves me correct, if that's the case, then this must be the very war that Surge battled in. If that's the case, then why is his Raichu... Why is every trainer who says that they trained for so long, their Pokemon is only in their 20s or 30s? Raichu... Apparently he's been in a war with his Raichu. His Raichu should be much higher level than he is. Because if this was it, if this was actual like real life and Pokemon actually like were real and actually leveled up, if I were, if I survived a certain amount of stage history with a Pokemon, they would be much higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes down to Pokemon 2, I don't even need strategy. Like your friend was saying, you don't need to be a, have a Pokemon be on par. You just need a Pokemon who's either that who's either got that weakness down or is just strong enough. You're the first one to come up with the concept of grinding in world. Indeed. Cuz I've always thought of that. I've always questioned what grinding in a game would be like if it was real? How is the concept of grinding in a video game look to that person in the video game world? How does it feel like if you were in a video game world and you just saw a dude walking back and forth battling a Pokemon? How would you, how would it look, how would that look to you? <laughs> it's called working out. Look, man. I always have these kind of, these thoughts whenever I play a game and I see like NPCs who are just back and forth walking around. I always wonder, why does nobody in the video game world wonder what the heck this dude is doing? So I say <laughs> things today so I can pick up heavier things next week. Touche? That's not what I was going for, but okay. Whoa! You're the real deal, kid! Fine then, take the Thunder Badge! The Thunder Badge cranks up your Pokemon's speed, it also lets your Pokemon fly anytime. You're a special kid, take this! TM contains Thunderbolt! Teach it to an electric Pokemon. Fuck making my Pikachu wait several 50 levels. Normally I just don't, normally I let the Pokemon learn the move naturally, but my goal here is to get Raichu, and Pikachu doesn't learn Thunderbolt or Thunder for a long while. Normally I don't evolve Pikachu till he's about 50, so I can get him Thunder and Thunderbolt naturally. But fuck that. Also fuck Thunder. <laughs> Thunder's alright. It's really not a bad move, it's just its accuracy is garbage. And also is not necessary when I'm playing base game. I don't need it for any non-PVP related content. I can be fine on my own. So. Also, the main reason I'm not playing yellow, even though I could trade Pikachu 
to evolve him and trade him back. But I feel like that defeats the purpose of the walking Pikachu thing. But also because I don't want any ties to the anime. I mean, that's all it really has ties to is you get the starters, you get a Pikachu, you won't evolve, you face Jesse and James, that's it. It's really not much else. However, I just... Yeah. Okay. So now we can... Well... Oh yeah, the guy did give me the item finder. I don't need it though, but I'll take it. <laughs> yes, Nidoran learning double kick. Yes. That definitely was... Yellow did do a lot of things right. I'm not Yellow's a great game. I just I just prefer I just prefer red or blue over it. Now I'm just going to spam A. I really don't care about a lot of these hidden items, but I'm spamming A nonetheless. Ugh, your yellow got stolen. Ouch. My new, my completed leaf green got stolen. Just shortly, just shortly. Wow, when you were ten, ouch. A lot of my games got stolen from me too. My most recent one was a leaf green that I just beaten, and I was just got done doing Pokemon Coliseum's a uh, hundred man run where you go and get Ho Ho at the end of Coliseum. Yeah, I just did all that and transferred him to Leaf Green, and then not long after, a, my Leaf Green disappears. Along with a Game Boy Advance SP that I let a friend borrow. Huh. Odd. Funny that. Funny that both an SP and a Game Boy Advance game go missing. The SP I know where it is. I just gotta freaking get it back. The guy's in Illinois, though. It's okay. It's not a big deal. He has a basic SP. He has the original. I have my SP Lite. If anything matters... I can just buy myself a second SP if I want to trade. Which might be the case because I have a uh, a DS coming. Well, I just actually bought it. A DS capture device. A fat DS with a capture card. Why? It allows me to stream physical DS cartridges. Or physical Game Boy Advance cartridges. I want to be able to do this because I want to complete the Pokedexes on stream for my sake, not only because I want to transfer a lot of these Pokemon over to the next generation, but also because I want to have fun trying to complete the Pokedex for you guys. Just as a fun feature, fun little thing. But, I want to play all the physical Pokemon games. The only ones I was worried about were the GBA ones, but now with this new Game Boy, uh, DS, DS capture device that I found online, I was able to buy a DS with a capture device that allows me to stream DS games, which that's not a problem because I have a 3DS. The biggest thing is I can stream GBA, physical GBA carts, which I wanted to show off shiny chaining and platinum. And there's a few Pokemon that appear as long as you have a GBA cart in them. But there's also Pokemon I wanted that I wouldn't be able to completely get Unless I have these GBA carts. So now I should be able to have no, have no problem. Now I just gotta find working copies of Ruby and Sapphire. Or Emerald. Last time I tried playing Emerald, that game kept deleting its save on me. So I either gotta find a working copy of one of the two games or Emerald. I would prefer to do Emerald so I can get all three legendaries. Yes. Yes, they do. Do they swap of those? Uh, GBA still has the Eternal Battery. I don't know when that died. I think that started to stop after the uh, DS era. I've done. I've done it on. I've done it on watches. The only thing is I've ever done that for was a watch. 
I've never done it out of a physical cart. Game cart. Yeah, I've... My crystal. My Pokemon crystal from the, the very first crystal that ever released. Like, when it first released. Is the same crystal that I got that very first day that it released. So that crystal is original. And still going. It may here and there fuck up. But I don't think it's because the internal battery is dying. I think it's just because the game is old and I accidentally, like, put the cart down in some regard. And you know how old carts are. They delete themselves a lot. Don't know how we stuck with it for so many years. But. Yeah. My Emerald, though, when I did do a playthrough of Emerald, not for YouTube, just for myself, I made it about halfway through the game and it, like, it corrupted. I don't know if that was a battery issue or if this, the file just got corrupted, but it, it's been doing that subsequently every other time I try to play it, so... Something's up. I had a, a link to the past cartridge that had one set of saves when my friend's house and a different set at my house. What the fuck? That's odd. Yeah, I think I'm going to hop in on some ED then, uh, uh, after this here. So we're gonna save. Five hours Pokemon stream. It's not bad, though. I gotten old and got deleted, so when we started a new game, then when I got... <laughs> what the hell? I know I had an issue with um, my ex-girlfriend trying to play. I think it was... She wanted to borrow, I think, blue version? One of my original copies of blue or red. And uh, after a good, like, ten minutes of playing, it would officially delete itself. However, the file... Or the game still worked. So I had dead, double dead on it somehow. Huh, that's weird. And I don't know what was happening. It still worked. Because I was able to keep the save. So we were, we somehow had to like do something in order to make that save delete itself, but every time she tried to like put that thing down in a way to where she could pick it up again, it would just delete. So like she could never play a physical cart of Pokemon that was classic. It's weird. Alright, the cable. Cable! Power strip. Wiener. Okay. Okay. You're my PS4. Just got you. Got you. Turn you on. PC. And let's drop that. Hello to that. And we'll drop that. And we'll drop these. Boop, boop. And boop. charged batteries or do I need to charge you batteries <sighs> but it was true that is true that is true RAM right there what is going on with these batteries like 
These are chargeable batteries. How do chargeable batteries work? Because, I swear, I've had these batteries for some time now, and they never seem to want to stay charged. Does anyone... Does anyone know how rechargeable USB batteries work? Because every time I've tried charging these things, they never seem to stay charged. Yes, it's a USB battery. God. Ugh. Huh. Come here. Are you aware that the true ending of Eternal Darkness is only accessed when you've beaten it three times? Oh my, no. I did not. Well, I am now. <laughs> no, I am now. I did not know that. No, I did not. I figured there might have been something uh, that that wor that happens after you beat the game three times, but I did not know that. Maybe in the future, you'll see me beat the game uh, two more times, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, Wii Remote, please. Urgh. What are you doing? Where's my Wii? Con okay, sensor bar, please. I know you're on drugs, but God. I'm sorry, my sensor bar's not stationed well at all. Uh, what the fuck? Situate, dude. Is that hard? Soft modded we please. <clears throat> Wait. I shouldn't need this any longer. There's so much shit in front of this, it's interfering. <laughs> oh, it's so interfering. I know there's... I'm trying to actually load it via the touchpad, but it's not moving. I know I suck at motion controls, but this is ridiculous. <sighs> you play it through once, you can decide if you think it's worth it. If you decide it's not worth it, two more playthroughs, and you can just look it up on YouTube. It's cool. We'll have to. I mean, look at this library, though. That's just... These are just games that I know I would enjoy. Some of which I actually own. Like, Colosseum, Gale of Darkness, Pikmin 1. Pikmin 2 is not so great. Fantasy Star, of course. Paper Mario 2. Uh, there's your uh, Monster Hunter, I think. Metroid Prime series. The Metal Gear Solid remake. Which, I'm going to be doing the original Metal Gear Solid 1. Thank you very much. I don't care for Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. Or Snake Eater. That's actually the best Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 3. Sorry. So whatever this one is called. Something snakes. Snake Eaters 3. Uh, Mario Party 4. Fire Emblem. We got Evolution World. So good. 
Once once I'm done with Dragon Ball Z's The Legacy of Goku series, uh, expect Revenge of King Piccolo to come out. One of my favorite Dragon Ball side scroll beat em ups. Given your difficulty of pointing things, I would suggest you not play Lost Wind. Oh, it has nothing to do with me. My sensor bar just was not positioned enough for some reason. It's never that bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my... It's not that bad. I just... I don't know why it was a pain in the butt. My sensor bar has always been positioned where it is. I just... I moved it only because I haven't used it in a while. That was a soft suggestion. Though I think it's on stream. On stream. No, for PC. Hmm. Huh. No, I hate I hate motion controls, but Lost Lost Winds. I can try. I can look it up. Oh god, the delay. <laughs> god. Uh, Steam, I mean. Oh, I know what you meant. Both fun little games. Cool. I'll have to look them up. Oh, I know what you meant. My best friend says the same thing. Whenever my best friend talks about stream or Steam, he always says stream by mistake. I know what he means. He also... My best friend also likes to spell cum. C-U-M. Like, I know that's how you spell that version of cum, but when he says cum, he means the C-O-M-E version. So, whenever he spells cum, I can't tell if he's talking about orgasming or if he's talking about like I'm coming which don't take out of context <laughs> god damn it there's no way of saying that correctly takes me 90 minutes to beat the first one and about four to beat the second huh take a little longer for a first playthrough well I'm not four hours I assumed you meant four hours I mean, I wasn't going to be like, oh, it takes you about 90 minutes to beat the first playthrough and then four minutes to beat the second. I figured you had hours. Oh my god, the delay. That's my fault for... Hold up. I think there's one thing that's not connected. Here. Before we end this stream to start a new one. This is why there's a delay. I'm looking at OBS. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh. oh, that's better. Okay, how about not? <laughs> Game, don't scare the shit out of me the moment I get into it. All right, Quan, let me uh, end stream real quick so this is not a combined thing. And people who want to watch Pokemon don't come to this to see this. And then people who want to watch this don't see Pokemon and then have to watch that and to, to get to this. So I'm just going to end stream, make a new title, start it up as Eternal Darkness. And I'm also going to message Glistener Elf because this is a game that he requested and it's been a long waiting. So Also, this game brought in quite a few people. So there's probably several people who may make a return during the stream. So I'm going to go shout out and let... uh. Bunch of people will do the thing. Be right back in about two.